Bernie the Bus has worked on the roads for many years, ever since he and Thomas had their great race. He is a great friend to the railway, and would never dream of seeing it ripped up. One late afternoon, Thomas was taking his last train of the day when he visited Bertie at the bus depot. He looked rather miserable. What's the matter, Bertie? asked Thomas. My driver can't get my engine to turn over, sighed Bertie. His driver tried and tried again to turn Bertie's engine on, but it just won't work. Well, that's torn it, he said grimly. Your engine is broken down, Bertie. The depot manager strolled up. I've contacted Butch's manager, Bertie, he told the red bus. He'll have you repaired, but it'll be a long job. Who's going to take over my route, sir? Bertie asked. That's the thing, Bertie, replied the manager. Algie can't do it since he'll be needed on the Little Western. Then at that moment, Algie rolled up. I'll do it, sir, he boomed hastily. At least I have more seats than Bertie and Algie anyway. No, Bulgy, the manager said sternly. You'll be needed on the Scar Louis Railway. Bulgy just frowned. I've arranged a temporary bus to cover your usual routes, Bertie, the manager continued. He will do so until you're repaired. I understand, sir, Bertie sighed. Thomas felt sorry for Bertie as he started his journey home. I hope Bertie's mended soon, said Annie. The branch line wouldn't be seen without him, added Clarabelle. Thomas can only agree. The next day, Thomas noticed a green bus he had never seen before parked on a station car park. Good morning, he greeted, but the bus only gave Thomas a dirty look. What's good about it? He snarled. I've already took a railway down, and now I'm surrounded by the again. Excuse me? Said Thomas rather offended. Railways are just too slow and unreliable, replied the bus. And you locomotives are no different. We're not that slow, Thomas snapped. But we are reliable and really useful. Youthful? More like useless. The bus laughed. The only thing you're good for is a static display. The driver went into the bus's cab and put him into gear, and the bus drove away. Thomas was most annoyed, and so were Annie and Clarabelle. That bus is so rude! That bus is so rude! Complained Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas knew they were right, as he was hoping for Bertie to come back. At the top station, he met Toby. Before Thomas could complain about the bus, Toby interjected. You've met Ernie, haven't you? So that's his name, replied Thomas. He was rude to me when I only said good morning to him. I can understand that, agreed Toby gravely. I only just met him earlier this morning, and he was extremely hard to me and Henrietta, especially since I knew him back on my old line. You knew him? Thomas asked. Indeed, Toby answered. Remember how I told you and Percy about there? Ernie was the same bus that crashed into some world work. Thomas did remember, but he still frowned. I bet he hasn't learned a thing since then. He huffed. He's just about as bad as Bulgy. Quite right, said Toby wisely. But for now, I think it's best just to ignore him. Two days later, Thomas and Toby were exchanging passengers at Ellsbridge when Daisy screeched in in frustration. Let me guess, Thomas questioned. I suppose you had a run-in with Ernie today? Not just Ernie, fumed Daisy. He has a new driver, and he's a heavy drinker! You don't say, gasped Toby. Well, what did he do? Thomas ventured. Well, went on Daisy. I was waiting at the station when out of nowhere, Ernie's driver came up to me and threw a train can at me! And Ernie laughed at me and called me a big green pickle! Rather you than us, teased Annie. You did call us rubbish, giggled Clarabelle. Yes, but that's long since past, Henrietta corrected. Henrietta is right, Toby added. Daisy has been through quite enough today, as like I said, we all have to turn another wheel and ignore Ernie. That might be easier said than done, Toby, muttered Thomas. Now we have two rude faces on our branch line, and if Ernie keeps us up, we will be out of the job. Unfortunately, Daisy was correct. Ernie's new driver was badly under the influence of alcohol and he held things rather carelessly, especially on Ernie, who was already starting to not like him. Daisy on the speed, Ernie would warn him. Red baby, we'll get very far. The driver would scoff. 
but Ernie still kept up his rude image. Just face it, he gloated. Soon the railways will be out of action, and the roads will stand over them all. Stop littering about and get to my cab! Ernie barked as his driver walked up. Oh, alright, alright, groaned the driver. Don't rush me, I'm coming. Why do I have a bad feeling he might break down if that sad excuse of a driver doesn't take care? Will you slow down? You're taking a toll on my engine! Quit your whining. Your engine is fine. But it wasn't. What happened? The relief driver asked. Why have we stopped? I've broken down at the level crossing, growled Ernie. Now with stuck bother, the driver groaned. Now you just wait right here, I'll go for help. But unfortunately, he didn't get very far. As Ernie's driver was so under the influence, he fell flat on his face and fell asleep. A leathering fool, muttered Ernie, and began brooding. Just then, a ring of a bell sounded through the air. It was Toby, and he was heading for the level crossing. Oh no! Wake up! Ernie cried to his driver. That thing is going to hit me! But his driver was still sleeping. Then to Ernie's surprise, Toby slowed down to a stop. How were you able to stop in time? Gasped Ernie. We were alerted that you broke down, replied Toby. Now where's your driver? His crew checked him all over. He's fast asleep, his driver said. After all the stuff he's been drinking, now, do you think you can get the people home, Toby? Indeed I will, Toby said with a grin. Soon, Ernie was moved out the level crossing and his passengers climbed into Henrietta. Looks like history's repeating itself on you, Ernie, Toby chuckled. First you crashed, and then you broke down. And I get to pick up your slack again. Ernie just grunted to himself. Well done, Toby! Thank you, Thomas! Soon, Toby brought the passengers home right on time. Thank you, Toby! cheered the passengers. You are our savior! A few days later, Freddy returned went over to see Thomas and Toby. I've heard everything about Algy, he said. What happened to him? Well, his driver has been sacked and sent to custody, said Toby. And as for Ernie, he has been converted into a library bus. Well, that sounds like it serves him right to me, grinned Bertie. All that really matters now is that you're back on the team, smiled Thomas. Everyone laughed. It was good to have Bertie back.